In today's episode, we're going to explore the beautiful Wairarapa region on the North Island of New Zealand. Beautiful! Full for tonight! <laughs> Let's see how can I get down here. Oh, it's a bit slippery here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. So, alright, where were we? We've been traveling for many years, living on the road, traveling to all sorts of various fishing and camping spots all around New Zealand. But one region that we haven't yet explored is the Wairarapa region. So it's the first time for us. Wairarapa is the region on the southeastern end of the North Island, east of Wellington basically. It's a pretty remote area. So we came down from the East Cape. If you've seen our previous video, we had some epic camping and fishing up on the East Cape. Unfortunately, the weather forecast wasn't so good to go to all the spots we wanted to go to. So we ended up in Eke Tahuna. We found ourselves a really nice sheltered camping spot there. Beautiful little place. Not great for fishing because it's right in the middle of the country. Suppose you could do a bit of river fishing there. But the campground itself and the little camp, really nice and a reasonable price as well. So we were just stopping over there for two nights to wait out the bed easterly storm that was hitting the coast. She's a changing hair. Wow, oh one more. There. <laughs> After that we decided to head straight down to Riversdale Beach. Straight, a little bit this side, towards to here. Let's park it like that. Good, like that. Mm. All right, guys, well, we arrived at our campsite here in Riversdale Beach. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised about Vira Rapa. Uh, it's so nice here. The drive down here was very scenic. Uh, it's pretty remote, actually, but it looks all really nice and tidy around here. And yeah, we just arrived at the NZMCA Park, New Zealand Motorhome Association Park. So you can only park here as a member of this association if you have like a self-contained vehicle. But there's also a commercial campground here in this little village. Now the weather isn't really at our side. It's been raining and it's been really windy. So it looks really rough out there. Hopefully we can do a bit of fishing here because that's what we came here for to show you some camping and fishing in Wairarapa. So that's our first spot we are at now. Gonna we'll be staying here for a couple of days and hopefully we get a bit of nice footage for you guys. Let's do it. Let's go for a little walk and check out the Riversdale Beach town. Because we gotta register here. Any interesting books? The end of the day. So let's go to church. The church windows they have snapper and crayfish power and there's a surfer on the church window. Is he surfer? Uh, oh yes, yes. Now that's, that's pretty unusual for a church window. I think that's pretty cool actually. That's, that's kind of awesome. Never seen, seen a church window mm. like that. such a skill. <laughs> a 
Everything here looks super nice and tidy, guys. Very nice and tidy little village. We're still on the North Island here in Wairarapa, but it already feels like we're back in the South Island, eh? Yeah. It's not so overcrowded here. It's like... No one in the field of peace. No one around <laughs> on the ass. Yeah, the scenery feels a bit like South Island as well, to be honest. I kind of like it here. Even though we're on the East Coast, it feels like we're on the West Coast. Oh. Check out this little nice river here from Riversdale. Riverdale River. Wow, beautiful day. Still a little bit sweaty, but better than yesterday. All right. Uh, actually, we shouldn't maybe park on the beach because we got an incoming tide. I think it is a seal. Yeah. <laughs> Having sun bus today. <laughs> Start the room. Right. Yeah. And uh, what bait is this? Salted, salted kawaii? Yeah, I think it's salted kawaii or trevally. Great bay, Mark is wearing gloves today. Not to get fish fingers. And also not to get the sunscreen sent onto the... It's pretty wavy, I don't know if it's gonna work yeah. out today. But just try, yeah? I'm just gonna try and fly the drone past those breakers, not too far. To see, see if I can see on the camera the breakers and then just drop it over there and just pray that there are no rocks out there and we get stuck. Take off. So be careful, you don't step on the rocks in the line uh, and the wave. Waves will be high up. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Got some boost. If the sinker is holding or if it's mm. gonna drift. Yeah, because of the swell. Big wave. Now Mark is helping out this guy pull out this jet ski. Mark is coming back after helping the jet skier. We should do second cast now. One good summarator task, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy. Beautiful sunset over the dune. And then she's coming back here to us here. Asian made a nice dinner. <clears throat> Fried rice with egg, I think. So we're gonna have that now for a little change. Just holding my hand on my rod here just so I can feel any little tuck. There we go. I picked some fried beans, green beans, with a lot of garlic. And then cheese on top, and then mix the grain. This goes to Mark's mouth. Gotta stay healthy out there. <laughs> Might be some other seaweed stuck somewhere. Yeah, yeah, big time stuck. Oh, 
Well, this goat fish or red goat? Oh. Looks like a red pot, eh? Red goat on the mussel. Slimy one, right? Look. Look at the cute eyes. Oh, look. It's beard. Little beard. Put him back. Must have been a red cod. I don't know if it was a red cod, but it must have been. We have a look at home. But that is. <laughs> but we caught one interesting fish, eh? In the new place, a new fish. Hey, yeah. Unfortunately, one. we didn't have too much luck. We only caught a little red cod there. I mean, that was not too bad, actually, because honestly, never caught a red cod before. I've never targeted them. I know they are quite common on South Island in uh, winter time, but there was only a small one, really, and it's more like dragging in a piece of cloth rather than fighting with a fish. But at least we caught something. I also went for a little dive. Gotta cross the river now to collect some crayfish in power. Any harvest? Little ones only, mostly. Really? I managed to find myself some legal power, so that was pretty good. Just. I couldn't let these beautiful power shells to go waste, so I used them to sub power. I placed the sprouts that I've been growing in our caravan at the bottom of each shell and arranged the power sliced on top. I have to glue them with plenty of butter. And I added a drizzle of my Korean chili sauce, chogochujang, for the finishing. For the second serving of pawa, I made chowder with diced pawa and I also included some extra veggies like broccoli. So after our couple days there in Riversdale Beach, we went back to Masterton. I had a few things that I needed to do on my car, getting the wharf and things like that. On the way back, we just stopped over at Castle Point. Now Castle Point is a really cool beach, just a little bit north of Riversdale. And there's a freedom campsite that I wanted to maybe stay one night. You can freedom camp here for four nights in in a calendar month, in each, in a single calendar month from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. You can use this area for freedom camping here. So, not too bad, but definitely not suitable for caravan. It's a little bit small. I mean, we could maybe squeeze in. Actually very calm here today, on this side a bit more wind protected. I bet this would be a good place for some cliff fishing, if that's allowed. It doesn't say it's not allowed, but here are those cliffs, just dropping a line down there. Looks like some pretty good fishing territory to me. But we ran out of fresh water and there's no way to get any fresh water top up in this whole area. Also the weather wasn't so good. But we managed to stop there for the day and explore the beautiful cliffs. Uh, actually, our friend Fish, Eat and Repeat recently released a video 
where he went fishing, drone fishing of Castle Point. I'll link this up for you guys so you can have a look what the drone fishing is like there. He caught some nice gurnard. Well, it turns out there's some mountain goats here too. Black mountain goats. These mountain goats, they can climb almost like vertical surfaces. Look at that. Look, here's another Ford Ranger. <laughs> We'd have no problems towing our caravan with that one. No. This, one this one looks like right out of Mad Max. Beautiful. We made it to the south coast. We, we here a is a steep bit. Gosh. <laughs> well, you can see if someone comes on. <laughs> what? Oh gosh. Through the darkest night, a voice ignites a burning light. Through the storm, we go. Take the next left onto Western Bay Road, Farakohau Road. Almost there. There's a stream coming out to Ocean Beach. Past a little gully. Nice looking sea. Now after that we went straight down to Ocean Beach. Ocean Beach is on the western side of Lake Ferry. Ocean Beach is a very popular spot for fishing and there is also a beautiful freedom campsite. Campsite is awesome. There are not many people there, surprisingly. It filled up a little bit over the weekend. Check this out guys. Ocean Beach here at the south coast of Bairarapa. Looks like you can freedom camp here anywhere along this beach. We just don't want to camp right in front of those houses. So we're trying to figure out where we best park up here for a night or two. And this beach is nice. Check this out. Wow. That is pretty cool. Look at the scenery. The water is a little bit dirty right in here, right close to the beach. But there's some deep blue water just right there. And supposedly quite a steep drop off. Really good for surf casting. There's also a dock camp a little bit further down the track. We might check that out. See if we can uh, squeeze in there or just drive there with a the car first. Because it looks like the road's getting a bit rough. You want to go further? Just to go to be a little bit higher up on that side. I think it's okay. Check this out. Check this out. Those are the best camping and fishing spots, guys. Where you have the water just right in front of your campsite and all you need to do is load up with your fishing rod, walk out there and cast. How good is that? That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about camping and fishing spots. Oh, this is a very windy area because we're close to Wellington, of course. And the forecast is pretty windy. So hopefully tomorrow we won't be getting those 35 knots. Otherwise, it will make it a little bit uncomfortable here. So far, so good. A little bit further down the track, at the end of the track to Ocean Beach is also a really nice dock campsite that we had a look at. 
That's a really nice spot to stay if you don't have a self-contained vehicle with a tent in the bush, nice and sheltered. The water is much cleaner here than over there where we camped up. You can see the nice clean blue water current coming through here. I think the fishing would be better here. <laughs> Look at this, what a nice little spot for tent camping here. The stock campsite is really nice for, for tent camping, I think. There's so many spots like this. Really nice and cozy little camping spots if you have a tent, you know? Oh yeah, And super sheltered as well from all these winds. The trees look like the trees on the south coast here on the south island, all blown over to one side from all these hardcore southerlies. But the water here on that end by the dock campsite actually looks more interesting to fish than over there where we camped. I wouldn't want to drive down here with a with a truck. Probably gonna get stuck straight away in that here. Although there are lots of tracks, so some people they seem to be driving along here. Oh look, here's a power. Beautiful coastline down here, eh? Really nice and wild and remote. Yeah, so we got some tech power guys. So they, they take powers here for research and uh, how fast they grow. And if you catch one here, then you have to leave it. Or if you see one tech power, leave it there in place so that they can uh, research that. Here's the actual dock campsite, registration place for that. The Corner Creek campsite. But we got a group of kids have arrived here today. So the campsite is a little bit full. So we get crayfish and power. I don't know, I might have to go for a dive here. We did a bit of drone fishing, surf casting there. But again, we didn't have too much luck and I don't know what happened. We were there mid-November. Our fishing luck wasn't that great. We caught another, another red cod there. All right, here we go with my rig, trying this for the first time with some fish bites. Fish bites in combination with mussels, even if the mussels get picked off, fish bites should hold on. They're pretty tough, those things. Two hooks, just a normal dropper rig and my grapnel sinker. I don't think I have to cast very far here. The fish will be pretty uh, close in, so we'll see. Just past those uh, breakers. Let's give it a first cast and see if that actually works. I think the sink up here blows. I have to do it again. Maybe hell. At the start of the year Here comes your white night Got a foot on the edge Looking over the ledge I love Hayden, you're coming with dinner. Nice. Dinner by the beach is always the best. Anybody? Betty with the rice, it's bok choy, and then cucumber salad and eggs, and some rice, no fish tonight. Nice, thank you. Any bite? Felt like I had a bite already, but not so sure. The swell is quite, the undertow is quite strong and the swell. There were lots of people fishing there at Ocean Beach when we were there, once the weekend started and no one seemed to catch a lot. Yeah, I know that beach is really good for fishing because when you look at the Facebook group, I think it's the local viral rapper Facebook group, you see lots of catches being reported, including elephant fish, rig, uh, kawai, snapper. So this beach at times produces really good. After Ocean Beach, we decided to go to Cape Palliser, one of the spots where you still can camp for free as well in a self-contained vehicle is in a Navi. Navi is famous for those big bulldozers that launch the boats there off that Chingle beach. It's, it's quite an amazing sight. The weather forecast on the way to Navi was again pretty gnarly. This coastline, the southeastern facing coastline there of New Zealand, gets pretty windy and some weather extremes. So we went to one of the dock campsites on the way to Navi and 
just hunkered down there out of the wind. I went for a little walk up to those pillars uh, the next morning and it was cold, rainy, but it was stunning. It was absolutely beautiful. It was like walking into one of those computer games. If you guys know the computer game Dark Souls, I felt a bit like, like that. Definitely a really nice spot to stop over if you have time and stay at this dock campsite and do the walk. Well, we actually managed to get a view of the pinnacles now. Check this out. Pretty cool, ain't it? Looks quite mystical today in this nice, beautiful summer day. Oh yeah. Well, we weren't there for walking really, we wanted to do a bit of fishing. After this weather had passed, we went to Nawi. The campsite at Nawi is stunning. It's right next to the beach. You can see those bulldozers from there. Uh, the water was super clear. This one night that we were there, we had a really good window and it's a perfect spot to go diving and fishing. I've seen lots of people diving on that coastline, so it's quite interesting because you got some patches of really clear water and then a few hundred meters further you got a patch of really dirty water. Luckily the spot right out of Navi was very clear. I went for a dive and got myself a nice crayfish. Here we are. Oh, we arrived at a beautiful spot, freedom camping in Maui. You are allowed to stay here 21 days, but we don't have enough water. That's a shame that we don't have water, otherwise you could stay here at least one week. One more camper. Quite long. Size. Yummy power. Very big. We're boiling that in sea water here. Yeah. We're actually boiling that today in sea water. Just gotta put fresh sea water. Nice and clean sea water. Them together like a canapé. No. No. Mm. I actually like this yellowy stuff too. Mm. Buttery. Oh my god. Super tasty. It's called the mustard. Mm. I can go. The meat of tail. Keep in here like water. So yeah, have it, have it, awesome little it, spot, Navi. We also went to the lighthouse at Cape Palliser and had a look around there for the beautiful views. So the Cape Palliser lighthouse was first activated on the 27th of October 1897. And this lighthouse is notable for the, oh, they crossed it out, 95, 253, 267 is the latest version steps it takes to reach it. So when these steps were first built they were greeted enthusiastically as they replaced the slippery slippery narrow path up the rock face that was especially dangerous at night. Yeah, there would have been a very dangerous path going up there without the stairs. Pelissa Cape Pelissa Lighthouse finally made it to this fairly remote part of New Zealand. Haitian has COVID. <laughs> as remote as, as it gets here on the North Island, similar to the East Cape maybe. Similar remoteness. See a nice bum there. Already huffing and puffing. Haitian is a little bit like those little Jack Russells, you know. They shoot off like a rocket initially when you want to take them for a walk and then after a short moment they sort of start slowing down, huffing and puffing.
Oh, wow, no wind. Super windy where we camped in Nawi. No wind here. It's all blocked by this mountain range. Here's the lighthouse. Beautiful. There's a big seal colony in this area there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks uh, looks very good for diving here yeah, actually. Many rocks and the water seems very clear as well. Awesome little spot, Navi. We also went seal colony. They had pups when we were there, young little pups. Really cute to see. They make a lot of noise and they're super stinky. Uh, but still, nice thing to visit when you're down there at Cape Palliser. Yeah, guys, so that was our little tour of the Wairarapa coast. Like, unfortunately, our time was running out and we only managed to go to these four different campsites that we've shown you in this video. I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration when you want to travel down to the Wairarapa and do a little bit of fishing and camping there. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more fishing and camping content. See you next time.